In this demonstration of narrative therapy, we discuss some of the key constructs of the model as it applies to Cora, a first-generation college student. Please pause the video to review Cora's story. In the first session with Cora, we'll focus on three key constructs. The problem-saturated story is the story in which the problem plays the leading role and the client plays the secondary role, which results in negative symptoms. The dominant discourse encompasses culture and cultural discourse and is the story the client tells about his or her life. The client follows this plot and projects how things will turn out in the future based on the dominant discourse. Culture is an important part of this discourse as culturally based truths tend to influence our lives. The alternative discourse, as its name implies, represents an alternative to the dominant discourse or one that does not conform to the dominant plot. Alternative discourses can result in dilemmas or conflicts in personal values. If we look at Cora through the lens of these constructs, her problem-saturated story is one in which she feels overwhelmed and depressed and worries about flunking out of school. She feels stuck in between college and family life. Exploring her dominant discourse more closely, Cora comes from a hard-working family that emigrated from Mexico. She believes in collective values and sacrifice for the family. She utilized the values of hard work and responsibility to succeed in elementary, middle, and high school. Cora's alternative discourse is composed of three important factors, factors that do not conform to the dominant plot. She is a first-generation college student, the first in her family to attend college. Culturally, her gender role as a woman has traditionally been to take care of others rather than focus on her own needs in college. And finally, she values independence, which conflicts with the collective nature of her culture. Let's look in on the first therapy session with Cora. Uh, what's bringing you in for therapy today? I've just been feeling like really like overwhelmed and I don't know I feel like a lot of pressure and just kind of depressed. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been doing so well in school and that's really been bothering me. Um, I think I have like about a C average right now and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know this is my first year but I did really well in high school. I got like really good grades and yeah I just feel like that's not what it's like for me anymore and mm -hmm. I don't know I just that's how I feel. Okay, okay. Yeah. well it sounds like you, you're kind of feeling overwhelmed uh, kind of with a lot of kind of depression and stress mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to hear just a little bit more about your story about a little, little bit more about your background okay. uh, would you be willing to share that with me? Yeah okay. yeah so um, my parents have a high expectation for me to give back to my family, to my to help my siblings, to help them, mm -hmm. to help like my cousins and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Latina. Uh, my me and my family moved here from Mexico when I was three, and um, you know they just have that really like a big expectation for mm -hmm. me to give back to family because I think exactly. families like what they just raised us emphasizing that's exactly. that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So I just, I go home all the time, I give as much of me as I can to them, mm -hmm. but then I feel like I'm slacking off in school or I'm just too tired or I'm not doing as well as I should be for myself, mm -hmm. so it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I find myself just feeling like upset, sad, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel pressured. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like a lot of pressure is kind of, kind of related to your culture. Yeah. And so I'm kind of wondering how your culture is um, involved in this. How does, how does your culture shape you in uh, yeah. this part of your story? Um, well, like I mentioned, it's, it's just expected. Mm -hmm. 
coming from a Latino background mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, you spend as much time with your family mm -hmm. as possible. It's just like no ifs, ands, or buts. Exactly. You're expected to be home. You're expected to help around the house. I find myself babysitting mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. time for family members. Um, I helped raise my little brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and if there's anything ever going on with a family, like a family party or mm -hmm. a gathering, I'm expected to be there. And not just be there, but I'm expected to set up, I'm expected to clean up, I'm expected to do the work to prep, and mm -hmm. you know, so definitely like family is w number one. And I think something else is just like being responsible and having that like hard work ethic. Exactly. That's something really big that my dad's always told me, mm -hmm. like work hard. Mm -hmm. and you know put an effort when you're working and um, yeah I mean that's what it is it, that's my culture mm -hmm. but well like I said I'm a first year college student um, I live on campus but I still find myself going home often like every day mm -hmm. um, because my family lives, I live really close, or mm -hmm. well, my family's home is really close to campus. So I go home a lot, and um, I don't know, there's just, I find myself doing a lot for my family, and I feel bad if I'm not able to do that for them. At the same time, I feel like that's that kind of collides with what I want to do, mm -hmm. or like what what my friends are, what I see my friends doing, I can't do mm -hmm. sometimes because I have other obligations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I don't know, for me it's just, I feel like I'm stuck in between. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So stuck in between. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're, you're with two, in between two kind of cultures in some ways. Yes. That ways. So it sounds like feeling in between kind of contributes uh, to this stuckness contributes to maybe your depression as well. Yes. Cora mentioned that she felt stuck in between. Later in the same session, the therapist asks questions to better understand this problem. Called deconstructive questions, they're designed to do three things. Help Cora trace the effects of the dominant discourse, empower Cora to make more conscious choices about which discourses she will attempt to modify over time, and allow Cora to externalize conversations and thus view problematic stories, beliefs, and attitudes from a different perspective. The diagram shows a visual representation of what this looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if it would be okay if we kind of looked at that in between, that feeling of in between from a different angle, uh, kind of like uh, from a third person. And by that I mean being able to kind of see it from a different uh, angle, kind of step outside of a little bit. And by doing that, we might be able to see some things maybe that, that we haven't seen before. Would you be willing to try that? Yeah, I'll try it. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I guess my first question would be when and where uh, were you first kind of aware of in-between of that problem in your life? This year that I started college, I just, you know, I came to school and I'm living on campus, but then my family is calling me every day. And I found myself feeling kind of just like sad that mm -hmm. I couldn't do what my roommates were doing. You know, they kind of don't have the same responsibilities mm -hmm. as I do. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like on top of school I have 10 million other things to do. Exactly. exactly. So I think it just, when I realized that I just, I don't know, I just found myself like just feeling over, like more overwhelmed and like more sad every day. Yeah. 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 So, so this feeling in between kind of really contributes that kind of feeling overwhelmed in that regard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when do you think in between would be most likely, kind of in a, in a week or a day or whatever, when would be most likely uh, to be kind of present in your life? When I'm home with my family, mm -hmm. and I know that 
my roommates or my friends are just like hanging out on campus or going out to eat together or going to do fun stuff that I can't do because mm -hmm. I'm expected to be home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when other people are doing other things and they're kind of having fun or those kind of things, mm -hmm. being able to go out and, and, and do things, you are kind of, you have your responsibilities, the yeah. things that you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm kind of wondering uh, what, what the, what's that like? How, how does that kind of influence your thinking? How does it influ in between kind of uh, kind of impact you in that regard? I mean, I think first it, I get upset, mm -hmm. like it makes me almost angry, but then I feel like I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Because if I were to tell my parents like, oh I want to go with my roommate Ashley to the movies or to go eat instead of coming home, mm -hmm. they're not going to understand. Exactly. They're going to just like, kind of, not, I don't want to say criticize, mm -hmm. but they're going to tell me, no, you're expected to come home. You said you were going to be home. Yeah, that's, that's typically when, that's how it influences my thinking. I start off with getting upset, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. recognizing I can't do anything about it, and then I kind of just, you know, hold it in and it just, I just feel sad. Mm -hmm. So in between is kind of responsible for a lot of internal feelings, from mm -hmm. anger to sadness, mm -hmm. from, to feeling left out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. The therapist asks Cora to keep track of exceptions, or times when her problem-saturated story, feeling in between, did not play out as usual. Session two begins as Cora shares an exception or unique outcome, which is designed to help her create the life she prefers. The therapist then explores ways to help Cora incorporate this preferred narrative into her life. A couple weeks ago, actually, I was um, home before the weekend, and I told my parents that I wasn't going to come home that weekend because I needed the time to focus on my stuff and yeah I didn't feel so bad about it in the moment so yeah okay so it, it sounded like despite in between's pull to make you mm -hmm. feel guilty or overwhelmed mm -hmm. you were kind of still able to enjoy yourself yeah so what you're really talking about is something that's kind of interesting it's 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 when we think about uh, something called unique outcomes mm -hmm. and a unique outcome is when uh, let's say nine times out of ten, you know, a problem is is traditionally or typically what it what it, it normally does, like the in between. Mm -hmm. But the one time, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, meaning that that you're able to somehow see it or get through it in a in a, in a different way, mm -hmm. and that's important. What made that conversation different than the other conversations you've had with your parents? I think. I think when I had that conversation, I know I mentioned to you like typically I'll get frustrated or I'll be like upset, but then I just kind of get sad because mm -hmm. I feel like I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, instead, in that situation, I didn't let the sadness hit. Mm -hmm. I just kind of ran with being upset or mm -hmm. frustrated. So I kind of just like took charge almost okay. and told them like, hey, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. And um, what was it like to take charge in that situation? In a situation where you're maybe you didn't weren't normally comfortable to take charge. It felt it felt both good and bad. Mm -hmm. Just a little bad, like guilty, because I didn't want to. I thought about it later, and I didn't want to like mm -hmm. hurt their feelings. Yeah. And I really hoped they didn't like take it that way. But it felt good because I think like in that moment I felt confident almost mm -hmm. like confident in myself that I can do something for myself exactly, exactly. Yeah. how did they respond I you know I think they were a little surprised that for once I, I did something different um, but surprisingly they weren't as upset as I assumed they would be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought they were gonna like let me have it and <laughs> um, you know, they told me like, oh, well, we're going to miss you type of thing. And I think my mom was like a tiny bit upset, but mm -hmm. they they got over it and mm -hmm. everything's okay. Mm -hmm. So it looks like 
in between kind of wasn't really even present during that conversation mm -hmm. that you really kind of felt a, a level of taking charge like you said some yeah. confidence yes uh, in that situation um, so it's almost as if in between was kind of powerless mm -hmm. during that conversation yeah what do you think made kind of in between kind of powerless in that context what made you know that kind of emotional energy you know you know at bay or or, or, or kind of not as impactful as it normally would I think that day, like in that moment, I was just, I wouldn't say desperate, but I was just thinking so much about my grades and mm -hmm. my future and mm -hmm. needing to kind of like put that first mm -hmm. because though that's a value of mine, it's always in the back burner, yeah. I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. So I was just so focused on mm -hmm. thinking about the future and doing better because I t in high school, I did so well, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I felt like, hey, I need to do something yeah. about mm -hmm. this. So mm -hmm. I think that's what it was. What do you think would need to happen to kind of bring out that focus or maybe bring out that confidence more in future interactions? I think to have that confidence again, I think it's just really going to be having more of these conversations, making it more, making myself more assertive, become more assertive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. taking charge over myself mm -hmm. and like identifying what I need and kind of doing something about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In future sessions with Cora, the therapist will continue to explore both her dominant and alternative discourses. Therapy objectives may include the following, incorporating unique outcomes that are authentic to her culture and values, reducing depressive symptoms that cause her to feel in between, and helping her reauthor her stories so she can achieve preferred narratives such as incorporating time management skills to improve her grades. Before closing, here's a different way of looking at the main narrative therapy constructs in Cora's life. Her problem-saturated story is one she can readily identify, whereas her dominant and alternative discourse are more deeply rooted and will require more thorough exploration in therapy. Although she can easily identify the problem in between, it will take time for her to reauthor her narrative in a way that can truly reduce its impact in her life. Here are some final questions to consider. <laughs>